Lord, that's our prayer this morning. We need your mercy. We need your grace. We pray that if there be anything that will stand before us in the way of making to you, that you will deal with it this morning. We declare you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no other who compares with you. You have loved us with an everlasting love. When nobody counted us lovable, you loved us. While we were yet lost in sin, you gave your son Jesus Christ to die for us. We forever grateful for the work of Jesus on the cross. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Want to get into the sharing of God's word? Thank you Esther. We shall do this again. We'll keep doing this until Jesus comes. Amen. I want to get into God's sharing in the book of Jonah. I know, I know, I know Jonah. Jonah is in, in the Bible. I know you know the story of Jonah. Jonah is in the Old Testament. If you're counting from the bottom of the books in the Old Testament, Jonah will be number eight. And from the top is number 32. <laughs> Uh, I know we know the story of Jonah because it looks amazing, a story to tell. It sometimes looks unbelievable that this kind of a narrative will be recorded in the Bible. That somebody can be swallowed by a big, a, a big fish and, 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 and survive. And then they come out bigger and better. Somebody who was disobedient comes out an obedient person and goes to do what God called them to do. I don't know how many of us are in the house today and you are disobeying what God has called you to do. Our prayer is that you will not be swallowed by a fish. That we just want to obey what the Lord has uh, commanded us. And, and so we'll be looking at this book of uh, Jonah. When I was thinking, what do I call the message of uh, this book? I, I, I looked for a, a title that would talk about the, the kind of person Jonah was. I thought of calling him a fugitive. I thought that was not right. But I thought being a renegade was better. You, you have believed in something. You know it's true. But you don't want to do it. And that is many of us. And so we're going to look at uh, this book. It's a book that you can read on one sitting. There are four chapters in the book of Jonah. The longest is 17 verses. The others are 10 verses. And, and one has 11. So all these uh, 47 verses, you can read them like Allow us therefore to get into the book of Jonah and we're going to read from chapter number one so that we just remind us the story. And then we'll pick a few lessons uh, from this book. Then we'll bring our service to a close. Uh, if you give us Jonah chapter number one and verse number one, this is what scripture says. 
Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai saying Neno la Bwana likamjia Jonah mwana wa Misai likisema Said arise go to Nineveh that I, great city and cry out against it Inuka uende ni Nineveh ukaulilie ule mji For their wickedness has come up before me Kwa sababu wovu wao umenifikia Verse number 3 says Sari watatu wasema But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish Akainuka ili atorokee mji wa Tarshish From the presence of the Lord Toka kwenye uwepo wa Bwana He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish Akaenda Joppa akapata meli iliyokuwa inaenda Tarshish He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea. So that the ship was about to be broken up. Verse number 5 says then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his god and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. Wale mandhoda wakalia na wakalia kwamba kila kitu ambacho kilikuwa kwenye merikebu kitupo. But John had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship Uh, had lain down and was fast asleep. Na John alikuwa ameingia kwenye sehemu ya chini ya kina zaidi kwenye merikebu alikuwa amelala. So the captain came to him and said to him, "What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps you, your God will consider us so that we may not perish." Inuka mwitie Bwana, pengine Mungu wako atakusikia ili tusiangamie. And they said to one another, "Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us." Hebu na turushe kura ili tujue ni nani ametuletea shida hii. So they cast lots Hivo and the Lord fell on Jonah. Na Jonah. Verse number 8 says then they said to him Wakamwambia Please tell us Tafana for whose tuambie. cause is this trouble upon us? Ni nani ametuletea shida hii? What yote? is your occupation? Shia kazi yako ni gani? And where do you come from? Na umetoka wapi? What is your country? Inchi yako ni gani? And of what people are you? Na wewe umetoka toka kwenye taifa lipi? Verse number 9 says so he said to them I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Hivyo basi akawaambia mimi ni Muyahudi na namhofu Bwana aliye umba inchi na maziwa. Verse number 10 says Msari wa 10 wasema Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him why have you done this? Wale watu wakahofu sana wakamuuliza kwa nini umefanya hivi? For the men knew what he fled from kwa sababu alijua alichokuwa anatorokea He knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them Kwa sababu alijua kwamba alikuwa ametoroka toka kwenye uwepo wa Bwana sababu aliwaambia Then uh, verse number 11 Sara wa 11 Then they said to him Kisha wakamwambia What shall we do to you Tuku... that the sea may be calm for us Tukufanyia nini ili bahari litulie For the sea was growing more tempestuous Kwa sababu Bahari lilikuwa linakuwa baya zaidi. And he said to them pick me up and throw me into the sea then the sea will become calm for you for A- I know that this great tempest is because of me. Akawaambia nichukueni mnirushe kwenye bahari. Nalo bahari litatulia sababu najua ni mimi nimesababisha hili. Nevertheless the men rolled hard to return to land Hata but hivi. they could not for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Hata hivyo wakajaribu sana ili waondoke wenye kwenye ufuo lakini bahari likawa ni mbaya zaidi kwao. Verse number 14 says therefore they cried out to the Lord and said we pray O Lord please do not let us perish for this man's life and do not charge us with innocent blood for you O Lord have done as it pleased you. Hivyo basi wakamlilia Bwana wakasema usituangamize. Verse number 15 So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased from its raging. Hivyo basi wakamchukua Jonah wakamrusha kwenye bahari na likatulia. Verse number 16 says then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Hivyo basi wale watu wakamhofu Bwana na wakatoa dhabihu. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Naye Bwana alikuwa ameandaa samaki mkubwa wa mezi Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Na Jonah akao kwenye tumbo la hiyo samaki siku tatu na usiku tatu. And that is the story of Jonah. Na hiyo ndiyo hadithi ya Jonah. That is chapter number one. Hiyo ni sura ya kwanza. 
We will not read chapter 2 and 3 and 4. But you can read on your own. We have done the bigger part. You only have 31 verses to read. You have read the book of Jonah, the whole of it. Now we are talking about this man called Jonah. We say Jonah is the son of Amitai. It is recorded that he prophesied during the king. Uh, called Jeroboam the second. The reference to that is in Second Kings chapter number 14, verse number 25. Now, I wanted to look into the meaning of the name Jonah, and this is what I found out. Jonah means, it is a Hebrew uh, uh, name uh, or Hebrew origin, the meaning of Jonah is dove. Ninjiwa. It also means peace. We also know that the dove is, is, is a bird that symbolizes peace. Now we are told dove or peace was the son of Amitai. Now Amitai who was the father of Jonah again I looked this up in the uh, dictionary and Amitai means it is, it is of course um, a, 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 a male's name and the title of uh, or the, or this name Amitai means truth. So we have a dove or we have peace son of truth. But we see this peace receiving a message from the Lord and he decides not to go where the Lord has sent him. In other words, we would, would, would say Jonah is a messenger of truth or a messenger of peace. But right from the word go, he rebels against God. We see from verse number one of the scripture that we read he, received the, he receives a message and be that as it may he is literally running away with the message. He has received the message but he decides to run away. He actually went the, the opposite direction. God had sent him to go to Nineveh which is northeast of where he was because he was coming from uh, uh, Israel. But he decides to go to Tarshish. Which is directly opposite. And uh, we are told that uh, the, the present uh, uh, Spain is where he wanted to go. And when I thought about Jonah, and I'm thinking, you have received a message from the Lord and you have decided to run. And, and maybe there's somebody in the service today, you are seated calm and cool and collected, but you know you are running. Could, could it be possible that you have received a message from the Lord? And it is only you who knows where you ha whether you have received this message. But I have realized that people who run have something that they know. If you see somebody who is running, they know something. Either they are running from a place where there is war, or they are running from their home, or they are running because of they have some information that uh, they have received. Now, this book of Jonah, in this first chapter that we read, we see Jonah getting the message from the Lord. And unlike many other prophets that were called, God, God does not send Jonah to his people, Israel. He actually sent Sends Jonah to a people that were of the world. He sends Jonah to the people of Assyria. And so we see in chapter number two, 
Jonah goes and uh, he's swallowed by the fish. Jonah nenda na na mezu wana samaki. Right in the in the belly of the fish he calls out to the Lord. Na akiwa kwenye tumbo la yule samaki akalitia jina na akamwitia Bwana. And God hears him. Na Mungu akamsikia. In, jo- in in Jonah chapter number 3. Katika sura ya 3. We see Jonah uh delivering the message he he goes to Nineveh. Tunaona Jonah akienda Nineveh kuwasilisha ule ujumbe. And preaches a short sermon. Na anahubiri ujumbe mfupi. And the entire city na mji wote returns or repents and God does not destroy the city. Unamrudia Bwana na Bwana hali haribu lile jiji. Of course in Jonah chapter number 4. Katika Jonah sura ya Jonah is so angry that God has forgiven the people of Nineveh. Jonah amekasirika sana kwa sababu Mungu ameusamehe mji wa Nineveh. Jonah is is so annoyed that God has forgiven the Assyrians. Amekasirika sana kwa sababu Mungu amewasamehe wa Assyria. Now, a couple of things that we are going to see from uh, this book. Mambo kadhaa ambayo tunaona toka kwenye hiki kitabu. Number one, jambo la kwanza that God is sovereign and does what he wants whenever he wants with whoever he wants. Mungu ni huru na hufanya analotaka wakati anapotaka mahali anapotaka in Psalm 115 and verse number 3. Zaburi 113 no mstari wa 3. Psalm 115 verse number 3 says but our God is in heaven. Lakini Mungu wetu yu mbinguni. He does whatever he pleases. Hufanya lile analotaka. Just the other week we are coming from uh, we are still in the book of Colossians. Tuko kwenye kitabu cha Wakolosai. In the book of Colossians one of the themes that come out na somo ambalo linatoka pale is the supremacy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ni ukuu wa Yesu Kristo. And this same message na or this same idea na huu jumbe ama wazo hili is brought out by Jonah ndilo linalo wakisiwa na Jonah or the book of Jonah brings it out ama kitabu cha Jonah kina uh, wasilisha ujumbe huu throughout the narrative uh, of Jonah kupitia simulizi yote ya yone we see Jonah. god becoming involved tunaona, directly tunaona mungu akihusika moja kwa moja in the story of Jonah katika hadithi ya Jonah number one because he's the one who sends Jonah mwanzo kwa sababu ni yeye alimtuma Jonah It is his desire to see the Ninevites come to him. Ni tamaa yake kuwaona wa Nineve wakimrudia. It is God's desire. He desired it. They were not his people by the way. Hawakuwa watu wake Mungu. Ni yeye alitamani. But we know everybody who lives and lakini, everybody who has lived was created by God. Kila mtu ambaye anaishi ama aliwahi kuishi. And so God in his own mungu. sovereign way. Na hivyo basi katika ukuu wake seated on his throne akiwa meketi kwenye enzi yake he decides to call one of the prophets akaamua kumuita nabii mmoja in israel pale israel he does not send him to the north hamtumi kaskazini or to the south ama kusini he sends him to the nations of the world ana mtuma kwa mataifa ya ulimwengu he sends him to nineveh ana mtuma nineveh We were told last week that Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. Tuliambiwa juma lilopita kwamba Nineveh ilikuwa ni mji mkuu wa Assyria. Now shortly we'll be looking at what kind of a people were in, in Nineveh. Muda si muda tutaangalia watu ambao walikuwa naishi pale Nineveh. But I want us to understand that God decided in his own way without consulting. He just decided because he's sovereign. Lakini nataka tujue kwamba Mungu aliamua kwa njia zake sababu yeye ni huru. Have you heard of stories of people who when they're about to give uh, their inheritance? Sije kama umesikia kuhusu watu ambao wakati wanatarajia kutoa urithi wao? They have this huge empire. Wana mali nyingi. I think it happens a lot in the west. I haven't heard a lot of that uh, in Africa. Mara nyingi hufanyika pale magharibi alikuwa hapa Africa. This guy decides it's time to go. They are, they know they are just about to die and so he decides. Hivi basi mtu huyu yu karibu kufa hivi basi anaamua. I'm going to give a portion of my my empire to to my dog nitapatiana sehemu ya urithi wangu kwa mbwa wangu they do that huwa anafanya hivyo to the house help kwa mjakazi wa pale nyumbani and because the the wife didn't treat them well na kwa sababu pengine mke hakumfanyia mazuri says there is nothing for you here anasema kuna kitu chako hapa you know the house girl who has been all along being becomes the heir <laughs> now that is deciding out of the norm 
Hivyo basi ni uamuzi ambao si wa kawaida. It shows your sovereign in what you're doing. Inaonyesha wewe uhuru katika yale ambayo This is what God does for the people of Nineveh. Hivi ndivyo Mungu anawatendea watu wa Nineveh. Says you are not the people of God but because I am God I'm going to show my sovereignty. Anawaambia kwamba nyinyi si watu wa Mungu lakini sababu mimi ni Mungu nitaonyesha uhuru wangu. In his sovereignty. Katika uhuru wake. He gets involved in 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 this story of Jonah and impacts the things that we see narrated there. Ana shiriki katika hii hadithi ya Jonah na tunaona mambo ambayo aliyafanya pale. In Jonah chapter number 1 and verse number 4 he raises a storm. Ana inua dhoruba. Imagine this this guys are just uh uh sailing into the ocean or into the sea and God says but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Kulikuwa na dhoruba kubwa hivi kwamba meli karibu ivunja vunjo. So he says have I sent you and okay. you have refused to go. Kwa sababu alikuwa ametuma so you are on your way to Tarshish. Wewe unaenda Tarshish. He commands the sea. Anaamuru bahari. Let there be a storm. Na kuwe na dhoruba. Oh there is nobody else who can do that apart Hakuna from a sovereign God. Hilo. It is only the sovereign God who can do that. Ni huyu Mungu huru pekee ambaye anaweza kufanya. He gets involved in the nature. Ana shiriki katika hali halisi ya mambo. As if that is not enough. Kama halitoshi. He commands a big fish. Anaamuru samaki mkubwa to come and swallow this prophet of God. Aje ameze huyu nabii wa Mungu. And so the fish doing its rounds in the in the sea. Na hivyo samaki akitembea pale baharini receives a command from the sovereign lord. Anapata amri kutoka kwa Mungu aliye huru. Well number 5 million and 2. Eh. I command you to go and swallow that guy who is just about to be dropped from the ship. Na kuamuru uende umeze huyu jamaa ambaye anatupwa toka kwenye And as he's been dropped. Merkebu. Na anapotupwa he slides into the belly of the fish. Anaingia kwenye tumbo ya samaki. Isn't it amazing that he was not um digested? Si hilo ni jambo la kushangaza kwamba hakusagasagwa. Do you imagine yourself in the fish? Je, wafikiri mambo yatakuwa jukio? In the belly of the fish. Tumbo la samaki. You know, you know fish is slippery and slimy. Unajua kwamba samaki ni telezi. On the outside hapa nje how much more on the inside je ndani itakuwaaje and so jonah is just sliding there and you must jonah anateleza humo ndani and god preserves him in the belly of the fish because of his sovereignty na mungu anamhifadhi pale kwenye tumbo la samaki sababu ya ukuu wake god gets involved in jonah's story mungu anahusika katika hadithi ya yona in the book of Jonah chapter number 4 verse 6 to 7 katika sura ya 4 when he has landed in Nineveh and he has prophesied to the city anapofika na Nineveh na kutoa unabii then god brings up a shade for him mungu anamuinulia kivuli he's seated and he's waiting to see what's going to happen with this city ameketi amengoja aone nini kitafanyika kwa ule mji and the lord god prepared a plant and made it come up over jona na mungu akaandaa mmea akaufanya uje that it might be a shade for his head uwe uvuli kwa kichwa chake to deliver him from his misery kumkomboa toka kwenye shida zake so jona was for a moment grateful for the plant na hivyo basi yona kwa muda akashukuru kwa ule mmea ghafla bin vu god produces a worm mungu akatoa kiwavi and the tree is eaten up by the worm na ule mmea ukaliwa na kiwavi and jona is like now what again na jona akashangaa nini tena in all this we see the sovereignty of god god's katika, power at katika work katika mambo haya yote tunaona nguvu na uhuru wa mungu it clearly demonstrates that um that regardless of the confusion or the chaos that we find ourselves in that god is in control kwamba mungu yu katika hatari and you could be here and things are not working for you nothing seems to be working unaweza kuwa hapa na hakuna jambo ambalo linafanyika even what you know god had told you to do hata kile ambacho wajua kwamba mungu alikuambia ufanye you started a business and you knew god was in this but it's not working ukaanzisha biashara na unajua kwamba mungu alikuwepo lakini haiendelei vizuri you are in a family but things are not working uko katika familia na mambo hayafanyi vizuri there is a sovereign god who is able to take care of the issues that we go through pana mungu mwenye nguvu ambaye anaweza kushughulikia mambo ambayo tunapitia god is sovereign mungu ni mwenye nguvu do not forget for a moment usisahau hata dakika moja that god is sovereign kwamba mungu ni mwenye nguvu he does what he wills hufanya lile analotaka 
when he wills anapotaka, with whoever he wills na yeyote anayetaka and for us we say yes sir na hivyo basi tunasema ndio bwana what is that that is too big for our god je ni hilo jambo lipi lilo gumu sana kwa what is that that you are saying now i have come to the end of my life ni lipi ambalo unasema kwamba nimefika mwisho i'm here to encourage you that there is a sovereign god who knows he gets involved in nature he gets involved in the lives of human beings niko hapa kukuhimiza kwamba pana mungu ambaye hushiriki katika mambo yote shall i even say people who even don't regard god he is involved in their lives hata wale watu ambao haumtambui mungu yeye anahusika katika maisha yao he was involved in the lives of the ninevites alikuwa na alihusika katika maisha ya waninevi and so the book of jonah brings out the sovereignty of our god na hivyo basi kitabu cha yona kinaleta ukuu wa bwana it was not just written for the children of israel to Hai, see hakikuandikwa tu kwa watu wana wa israeli waone it was recorded jonah's narrative was recorded for us lakini kilinakiliwa kwa sababu yetu and so we can approach that god who is sovereign na hivyo basi tuweza tukamwendea huyo bwana mwenye number two thing that comes out of this book of jonah jambo la pili ambalo linajitokeza is the idea of a saving god god who is who owns salvation ni wazo la Mungu ambaye huokoa his nature of of salvation God is a saving God Mungu ni Mungu wa huokoa Scripture says that salvation belongs to a God Revelation chapter number 7 and verse number 9 to 10 Neno linasema kwamba uokovu ni wa Bwana This is what Scripture says Hivi ndivyo andiko la After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations tribes peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands he continues to say verse number 10 and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and unto the lamb Wokovu ni wa Bwana ambaye huketi kwenye enzi And so we have a God a God of salvation. Na hivyo basi tuna Mungu wa wokovu. In this book of of Jonah, katika kitabu cha Yona, God desires that the Ninevites Mungu alitamani kwamba waninevite receive his wa, salvation. Waapokee wokovu wake. The assignment of his prophet kazi ya nabii wake was to take a message to the people of Nineveh that they should turn to the lord and they will be saved ilikuwa ni kwamba apeleke ujumbe kwa nineve kwamba amgeukie bwana ili waokolewe we see the saving love of god through god's desire to see nineve saved tunaona upendo wa bwana kwa kuangalia jinsi ambavyo mungu alitamani nineve iokolewe now for a moment let me let me tell you about nineve kwa dakika moja hebu nikwambie kuhusu mji wa nineve like we said it was the capital city of assyria tulisema ni mji wa kuwa assyria mji mkuu wa assyria the assyrians were known to be a very very bad people assyria walijuta na kuwa watu wabaya sana they actually worshiped idol gods walikuwa ni waabudu waabudio miungu and one of their gods na mmoja wapo was god dagon aliitwa dagon now I, i don't know whether we have the, that um, um, image of the god dagon siji kama tuna hiyo picha now the god dagon huyu mu was supposed to be half man alifa awe nusu binadamu and half fish na nusu samaki <laughs> Now God sends his prophet Mungu anamtuma nabii wake to go to the people of Nineveh. Kwenda kwa watu wa Nineveh. And he refuses to go. Na anakataa kwenda. And God sends a fish. <laughs> Mungu anatuma samaki. Swallows Jonah. Ana meza Jonah. And so I'm thinking na hivi basi nafikiri where Jonah was spit spat. Wa mahali Jonah alitemwa where Jonah was vomited by the by the fish mahali alitapikwa na samaki it must have been on the shores of 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 uh, their their place lazima iwe ilikuwa ni kwenye ufuo wa bahari now when you go to the shores many times you'll find people there mara nyingi ukienda kwenye ufuo mara nyingi utakuta watu pale I'm, i'm told even at night you'll find people who are fishing hata usiku utapata wavuvi let's imagine that Jonah was vomited during the day Hebu tufikiri kama Jonah alime, alitapikwa mchana. Imagination is for free. Assume that <laughs> he was vomited during the day. Eh, hebu chukulia kwamba alitemwa mchana. We also transport ourselves to the coast. Kisha tujipeleke pale pale. During the day you're going to find so many people on the beach, isn't it? Pale mchana utakuta watu wengi. Some that are just walking going Wengi. to nowhere. Wengine wanatembea tu. Some that are burying themselves in the sand. Wengine wamejizika tu kwenye mchanga. Some that are just seated watching the the tides. Wengine wameketi tu wakiangalia mawimbi. Of course others are in the water swimming and doing their games. Wengine wanaogelea na michezo. And then this whale comes up. 
alafu huyu samaki anatokea of course people had to scamper isn't it hivyo basi watu wakatoroka when the whale is coming wakati samaki yuo i haven't seen one i'm just imagining eh. if it is coming to the show kama huyu nyangumi anakuja kwenye ufuo it must be coming with huge amounts of water lazima angekuwa anakuja na maji mengi tu so he, this 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 big whale comes and then vomits jonah na hivyo basi nyangumi huyu mkubwa akaja tu akamtapika yona the photographers of the day wale wapiga picha wa siku hizo they captured that image kama wangepiga hiyo picha that was half man ambaye ilikuwa ni nusu binadamu half fish nusu samaki the god of the ninevites mungu wa ninevi of course they must have been scared when jonah came out because 3 days in the belly of the fish haikosi kwamba alikuwa una hofu sana baada ya jonah kutoka even though he was not consumed and digested he hata kama hakukereketwa he must have changed color lazima awe rangi ilikuwa imebadilika so when they are doing their things on the on the beaches this this guy is vomited na hivyo basi wakiwa pale kwenye ufuo huyu jamaa akatapikwa and he comes out alafu akatoka saying repent it's only 40 days and then this city will be destroyed kisha mtihutaangamizwa 40 days this city will be destroyed baada ya siku 40 mji hutaangamizwa this is a slimy preacher <laughs> ni mhubiri uh, mtelezi mtelezi sana ako na mate ya fish eh, na ako na eh, all those things yes. now the people who saw that wale watu ambao waliona and they knew that the god of that city was dagon na wakajua kwamba mungu wa must have said dagon. this must be god wakasema huyu lazima awe ni mungu of course it was god ni kweli alikuwa ni mungu and so the entire city na hivyo basi mji mzima comes to the lord ukamjia bwana it is recorded that nineveh was a city that you would go around in 3 uh, days ime na kilio kwamba nineveh ilikuwa ni mji ungeuzunguka so kwa siku tatu so he crossed the city na hivyo basi akapita pita mjini and as he crossed the city na alipokuwa katika pita pita The people maybe were saying that is the god. Pengine watu walikuwa wanasema huyu ndiye Mungu. He was brought to us. Alieletwa kwetu. With the message. Na ujumbe. Repent. Tubuni. In 40 days. Katika siku 40. This city will be destroyed. Mji huu utaangamizwa. The truth of the matter is that the entire city scripture records that there were 120,000 people all na watu 1000 all all turned to the lord 1120 wote wakamjia bwana wakamgeukia bwana So this story illustrates na hivyo basi hadithi hii inaonyesha salvation belongs to the lord kwamba wokovu ni wake mungu Not just the people who are in the boat with Jonah who are saved. Si kwa wale watu ambao walikuwa kwenye merikebu na Yona pekee ambao waliokolewa. Not even Jonah himself who was saved. Si Jonah pekee aliokolewa. But also the Ninevites who are also saved. Lakini pia wale watu wa Nineve waliokolewa. Now the cruelty of the Ninevites was known all over. Ukatili wa Nineve ulijulikana kila mahali. The Ninevites were cruel people who shed blood and they were idolaters. Walikuwa ni watu katili ambao walimwaga damu na wakaabudu miungu. Among other things that the armies of the Assyrians did when they captured their people, the the the, the prisoners of war. Baadhi ya mambo ambayo jeshi la wa Assyria lifanya baada ya kuwashika mateka. I remember the other time when we, we talked about them in the book of Nahum. Nakumbuka tuliwazungumzia kwenye kitabu cha Nahum. They would capture their 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 prisoners. Baada ya kuwashika mateka and with fish hooks they would hook their mouth na kwa some mitaka samaki wangeweka kwenye midomo and force the the captives to walk long distances na kuwashurutisha watembee kwa muda mrefu all this long having hooks in their mouths wakiwa na hizo ndoano kwenye midomo yao long distances na wakiwa naongozwa kwa many of their victims would die masafa marefu na wengi wangekufa they didn't just do that hawakufanya hilo pekee they would drive a spear behind a man's back wangeingiza mkuki and then it comes up through their skull tokea nyuma kwa mwanamke and then they would plant those kifuvu. those those people would you call them spears or people with with a spear through their 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 belly to their head so that the enemies and the people who dared to attack Assyria would see an example and not there ili wawe mifano kwa maadui ambao walitaka kuwavamia such was the cruelty of of the Huo ndio ulikuwa ukatili wa waninevi. But even in that condition God sends salvation to them. Lakini hata katika hali hiyo Mungu akatuma wokovu kwao. And so he tells us that God has a global agenda for salvation for humanity. Hivyo basi inatuambia kwamba jambo la wokovu ni la dunia nzima. 
God wants all of us to come to him. Mungu anataka sisi sote tumjie. Regardless of who we are and what we have done. Licha ya sisi ni nani na tumefanya nini. Number three thing that we pick from this story of Jonah. Jambo la tatu ambalo tunali tunajifunza toka kwenye hii hadithi. Is that the story of Jonah? Ni kwamba hadithi ya Yona. Incredible as it looks. Likiwa la ajabu ikiwa ya ajabu jinsi ilivyo unbelievable as we would think jinsi ambavyo inakaa kwamba haiaminiki amazing as it is ikiwa ya kushangaza jinsi ilivyo it is a historical fact ni jambo la kihistoria ambalo ni la kweli it is a historical fact ni jambo la kihistoria ambalo kwa kweli lilifanyika it happened lilifanyika and it is recorded in scripture na limenakiliwa kwenye maandiko Jesus speaking to his disciples. Yesu akiwanenea wafuasi wake. In the book of Matthew chapter number 12. Katika Mathiyo 12. Verse number 39 to 41. Mstari wa 10 39 hadi 41. This is what Jesus says. Yesu akasema. But he answered and said to them. Akawajibu akawaambia. Now these are the, the, the teachers of the law that are coming to Jesus and they're asking questions. Hao walikuwa ni walimu wa sheria ambao walikuwa wanamuuliza Yesu maswali. Jesus maswali. answered and said to them. Yesu akawajibu akawaambia an evil and adulterous generation six after a sign Kisa, kizazi ambacho ni kiovu kinatafuta ishara and jesus says and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet jonah na hakuna ishara ambayo itatolewa kwao isipokuwa ishara ya nabii jonah verse number 40 says for as jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish jonah, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth kwamba jonah alivyokuwa kwa siku tatu na usiku tatu kwenye tumbo la samaki ndivyo mwana wa mungu atakuwa kwenye tumbo ama kwenye shimo la dunia hii the men of nineveh will rise up in the in, ju- in the judgment with this generation and condemn it watu wa nineveh watainuka na kizazi hiki na wakihukumu because they repented at the preaching of jonah and kwa, indeed a greater than jonah is here kwa sababu walitubu kwa sababu ya ujumbe ya yona and this is jesus this is jesus who is saying these words huyu ni yesu anasema hivi says the people of nineveh repented when they had jonah Ana, preach to them anasema kwamba watu wa nineveh walitubu waliposikia yona akiwa And he says you people I'm telling you these things but you are asking for a sign. Lakini akawaambia nyinyi watu naambia mambo haya lakini mnauliza ishara. The Ninevites will judge you. Nyinyi mtahukumiwa na wa Nineveh. They believed a lesser person. Ah uh, walihubiriwa na mtu ambaye alikuwa ni wa chini zaidi. They turned to the Lord. Lakini wakamgeukia Bwana. I am greater than Mimi ni mkuu shida huyo Yona. And I am telling you this. Na nawaambia hili. Jesus quotes the account of Jonah. Yesu ananakili hadithi ya Yona. And this is many many years after. Ambayo ilikuwa ni miaka mingi baada ya Yona. More than 700 years. Pengine zaidi ya miaka 700 baada ya Yona. He quotes the book of Jonah. Akawa ananukuu kitabu cha Yona. As a person who reads scripture. Kama mtu anayesoma maandiko. What does this say to me? Inamaanisha nini kwangu? It simply tells me that there is credibility in God's word. Inamaanisha kwamba basi kuna ukweli katika neno la Mungu. That what has been recorded in scripture is true. Kwamba kile ambacho kimeandikwa kwenye maandiko ni kweli. So that those of us who for a moment think that this is just a story, this is something that was brought to you from the white man and all that. In, in there kawane... is a credence that comes with the story of Jonah in... when it is quoted by Jesus. Amen. Ili kwa wale ambao wanafikiria kwamba hii ni hadithi tu pana ukweli kulingana na lile ambalo Yesu alinukuu kwa Musa Yona. And so we can receive God's word. Na hivyo basi tuweza tukapokea neno la Mungu. Believe it as true. Na tuliamini kama ukweli because Jesus says what happened to Jonah? Kwa sababu Yesu anasema kile ambacho kilimfanyikia Yona was a type was a picture was a shadow of what was going to happen to me. Ilikuwa ni picha ambayo ingefanyika wakati ule kwake. Time, by this time Jesus is not uh, dead. Wakati ule Yesu hakuwa amekufa. He is not even uh, uh, crucified. Hata hajasulubishwa. And true to his word. Na ukweli for three days. Kwa siku he tatu, was in the heart of the earth. Alikuwa ndani ya nchi. The answer that he gave to the teachers of the law there. Jibu ambalo liwapa walimu wa sheria. So Jesus uses the story of Jonah as a true historical event that pointed to the reality of his own bodily resurrection. Hivyo basi Yesu anatumia hadithi ya Yona kama uh, rekodi ya kihistoria kuhusu lile ambalo lingefanyika kwa maisha yake. Brother sister you had better believe this word. Ndugu na dada lazima uamini neno hili. If you have wavered for a moment. Kama pengine umekuwa ukitikisika kwa remember, remember this is a record. Kumbuka kwamba hii ni rekodi ya kweli. It is 
credible it is proven it actually happened of course the other thing that we learn from this that we, we, we see Jonah as an example of people who believe they believe the word and we find ourselves there I find myself there many times I believe the word but I'm not walking the word. I believe what the word says. But I find myself falling short. I know the right thing to do. I know the message that I have received. But I find myself doing the wrong thing. And Paul also says the same. That the good I want to do, I find myself not doing. There is a constant fight within me ndani yangu kila wakati Are you here and that is your condition Pengine uko hapa na hiyo ndio hali yako Three things that we have talked about Mambo matatu ambayo tumezungumzia That we learn from the account of Jonah Kwamba tujifunze kutokana na hadithi ya Yona Besides the good story that we hear of Jonah and we were told long before when we were in Sunday school Kando na hadithi nzuri kuhusu Yona ambayo Jonah comes to us to tell us that there is a sovereign God Yona amekuja kwetu kutuambia kwamba pana Mungu mwenye nguvu who does what he wants when he wants Ambaye hufanya anachotaka wakati anapotaka He decides to send salvation to the people of Nineveh Aliamua kutuma wokovu kwa watu wa Nineveh Because the number two thing that we have said it is also true that in him there is a nature of salvation. Kwa sababu jambo la pili ambalo tumesema ni kwamba ndani yake pana hali ya wokovu. And we can go to him seeking the same. Na tuweza tukamwendea tukiomba msana. And of course the number 3 thing that we have said. Na jambo la tatu ambalo tumesema. Is that the record of scripture is a true record because Jesus himself when he came on earth he had a cross reference. Ni kwamba na kili ya maandiko ni kweli sababu Yesu alipokuja alinukuu hadithi ya Yona. A time fails to continue with this. But the truth is, that you could be here. And you don't know that God desires that you come to his saving grace. His desire to see people come to him has not changed. As it was then with the people of God, the Israelites, extended to the Assyrians, it has been extended to us today. His agenda hasn't changed. If he did it for the Nineveh, in his sovereignty he wants to choose you and bring you to his salvation because those of us who have received the call do we know the right thing to do why don't we do it we can go to God seated in this place today go to him and ask God to give us the enablement to do what is right. Muende Mungu muombe akuwezeshe ufanye lililo haki. Now I invite the worship team to the worship team to, to come here. Na napo waalika kundi la huduma waje hapa. We want just to open this space. Tunataka tufungue nafasi hii. If you're there. Ili ukiwa uko pale. This sovereign God huyu Mungu mkuu who sent salvation to the Ninevites ambaye aliutuma wokovu kwa Ninevi desires that you become one of the sheep in his fold anatamani uwe moja wapo wa mwanakondo his agenda to save humanity agenda yake ya kuokoa mwanadamu is not yet over haijakamilika and that has been extended to us today na tumepewa mwaliko huo hata sisi siku ya leo the word that we have received neno ambalo tumepokea we believe it to be true tuliamini liwe ni la kweli because jesus christ himself kwa sababu yesu kristo mwenyewe bears witness alitoa ushahidi that this account of jonah is a true account kwa hadithi hii ya jonah ni ya ukweli ilifanyika For a moment I want us to look into our hearts. Kwa dakika moja nataka tuangalie kwenye mioyo yetu. See the servant of God Jonah. Tumuone mtumishi wa Bwana Jonah. Receives a message. Anapokea ujumbe. But he decides to run. Lakini anaamua kutoroka. Could you be here and you Peng- have received that message? Pengine uko hapa na umepokea ujumbe kama huo. Could you be here and you have heard the Lord calling you? Pengine uko hapa na umesikia Mungu akikuita. But you have kept on running. Lakini umekuwa ukikimbia. You have kept on running. Umekuwa ukikimbia kwa muda huo wote. Father you run. 
The more you run, the more chaotic the situation becomes. You get into storms. You are ostracized by other people. They cast lots against Jonah. They identified that he was a problem. Could you be the problem in the situation that you find yourself in? I want to invite us if you're there. Would you want to make a decision for the King of Kings? Do you want to say, I want to stop, I want to stop running? I want to believe the message. The sovereign God is calling you. The God who is God of salvation is calling you. So if you are there and you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you lift up your hand, I'll see it. We'll pray together. And then we start on this journey. Journey and the walk of faith.